before we go any further, we have to talk about masking. Uh, masking to a watercolor artist, uh, it, it's an important concept uh, and, and you need to practice it. it. Really the people who are really good at it are the airbrush people who, who do uh, a lot of masking uh, during their airbrush processes and, and we'll go over this uh, later. At, at this point, we, we just want to talk about uh, watercolor masking. Uh, there, there are all kinds of masking, and, and we'll go through them individually. The simplest is a sheet of paper. Uh, you simply fold it in areas where you don't want your paint to be. That works well for spattering and, and, and very little paint application does not work for washes. Uh, you, you can cut templates out and, and make it certain sizes and you can take your brush and do spattering around it and everything works well. Also use your hand so to cup it to keep the spattering from going on there. But typically uh, what we use are tapes. But before I go into that, we need to discuss the support uh, that you're going to be masking on. If you're using rough watercolor paper, uh, you, you don't want to employ the, the technique of masking uh, on, on uh, rough watercolor paper. It, it will not work. Uh, it's too rough. You can't burnish the tape enough to stop the paint from seeping underneath your frisket or your masking material. Uh, cold press is fair. You can, you can work with it. it. It's a little difficult, but it's still workable. If you're really into fine detail, a lot of sharp lines, and, and you're going to use a lot of masking, you need to use hot press watercolor paper. And, and then you need to burnish the edges. Uh, now, now let's talk about the tapes. Uh, what people usually use, almost universally, is masking tape. That's really not a good tape to use. And let me show you what I mean. This is masking tape. Really, this is one of the few times where the cheaper the masking tape is, the better. And the reason why I say that is one, is the tape is very thin. And two, the adhesive on the back is not very tacky. It doesn't adhere to the paper uh, very well, and, and that is really a plus. And it doesn't leave a lot of residue. Uh, this is good masking tape here. It's thicker. You, you can tell when you when you pull it off, you hear, hear the difference. It's thicker, and it's very sticky. I put this on the paper, I burnish it down, it's going to leave a residue there. And it's also, if it's really good stuff, it's going to pull the paper up, a little bit of it, when I get there, and it doesn't work well. Uh, I don't use masking tape uh, on my paper. Another tape, which people use, cellophane tape, commonly called scotch tape. Same problems as with masking tape. Uh, it leaves a residue, it adheres well to your paper. You pull it up, you're going to leave residue there, you're going to pull your paper up also. Another one, which masks very well, is this packing tape. Very thin. You burnish it down, the paint is not going to come underneath that. This is this stuff they use to seal packages up with. Very good for packaging, and, and it works well on certain surfaces. Uh, if you were doing acrylic paints and, and you and you just start now, this do well. Probably pick up some of your paint though, uh, it, and and of course it's going to leave a residue there. Some people use it. Uh, I don't use it. Tears my paper. And make a special one. It's called watercolor tape. It's nice and clear. It's easy on your paper. It's not going to tear your paper up. 
There's only one problem with it. It's thick. And, and when you paint, uh, the paint piles up on the edge and it's going to seep underneath the tape. That's the difficult problem with, with working with paper and, and masking. Even smooth stuff will have a certain amount of, of what is called capillary action. When you paint up there with, with a liquid and, and, it's, and it's very wet, it's going to seep underneath your tape. But what we have to do is, is try to prevent that. And, and that's the reason why if you use smooth or hot press watercolor paper, it's not as much as a problem as it's going to be with cold press. My preferred tape is what house painters use. If you're going to use tape, you go down and you get painter's tape. It works great. This is it. It's not very expensive. Um, comes in brown and blue and different types. It's gummed here on the lower half or upper half as you see it. And it's not on, on, on the top, uh, bottom half here. This does not leave a residue on your, on your paper. And it also, it's, it's very thin and it doesn't pile up. And, and, and when you burnish it down, it will lift off. It works very well. Go to any place that sells paint, house paints, and you get painter's tape. Use that. It works well. If you're going to use tape, I recommend using this. I, th I think you'd be happy with that. Now, the other types of masking. One that comes over to us from the acrylic painting world is called frisket film. These people do a lot of masking when they airbrush. They do, they're masters at it. Now, now this frisket film is sticky on one side. It's got a paper back in here. That's a nice thing about this is that you can make shapes that you can't make with tape. Tape is for straight lines. Not all paintings have straight lines in them. You can also cut patterns out and stick it on there where you don't want the paint to be, other than paint around something. When, you, when you're painting a big background and, and you got like birds or something in there and, and, and you don't want to go back in and scrub out and do a lot of scrubbing and stuff, you can cut out little shapes of birds, animals, or whatever, stick it on there, burnish it down, and then paint over it, and then once your paint's dry, you can peel that piece off, and, and I'll, I'll show you a little bit with that. Now, a lot of irregular shapes, and, and a lot of spattering, and, and other things you can do, they have what they call a liquid frisket. This is masking. This is a large quantity here. You can use a bunch of it. Uh, draw it, paint it, put it on with a brush, ever how you want to do that. They also come in nice little tubes with a nice fine point on them. And it's colored. And you can put it on there in very little parts and, and do a lot of detail work with it. Over paint over it. This works well. This works well. This liquid frisket on all paper. It works well on rough, cold press, and smooth. Um, so, you know, the, it's just like painting. Uh, you, you're not going to get good straight lines with it or anything like that, but it's good for irregular shapes and, uh, and little dots and texture and stuff. So, um, I'll show you that also. Now, now what I'm going to do, I'm going to use a little bit of cold press. This is actually pretty smooth cold press. I'm going to put these tapes and the frisket on there. I'm going to paint over it. I'm going to show you what it looks like. Remember, the big problem with this is your paint migrates underneath. Watercolor paint will migrate underneath the tape if, if, if your support is too rough and you don't have it down tight enough. Uh, that, and that's not a big problem with acrylics because acrylic paint is so thick and, and you don't get the capillary action with that. So let, let's go ahead and, and put these masking materials on there. And I'll, and I'll show okay, we've got our masking material on this little piece of watercolor paper now. 
this watercolor paper here is somewhere between a hot press and a cold press. It's really not that rough. This is masking tape. I'm going to burnish it down. Okay, this is cellophane tape, commonly called scotch tape. I'm going to burnish it down a little bit. Put a tab here so I can take it off later. This is a liquid frisket. Okay, now this is the packaging tape, very thin. This is, this is really pretty good, the packaging tape is. I'm going to burnish it down a little bit. This is specialized watercolor paper. I'm going to burnish it down. And this is plain old painter's tape. The stuff that house painters use. I'll burnish it down a little bit. Now, and I know it's difficult to see. This is the frisket film that I showed you. And, and I cut it out in a funny shape. I'm going to burnish it down uh, with this. You can, you can use a burnishing tool. The edge of paintbrush. I, I just happen to use the edge of, of my old palette knife. Now, I'm going to put a very wet watercolor on this. And then we're going to let it dry. And we're going to see what it looks like. How much stuff has migrated under the edges. I'm, I'm doing a, a really wet one for a purpose. Uh, actually, I want it to, uh, to migrate as much as it can. It's down at the bottom. It's starting to pile up down here. Okay, we're going to let this dry. Come back, pull the tape off, discuss it, see what it looks like. It's dry now. Let's take this masking material off and we'll see what it looks like uh, when we do it. Masking tape. Like I told you, it's going to pull your paper up. Not, not good. Okay, cellophane tape, commonly called scotch tape. It did a lot better. It didn't pull the paper up. It didn't look too bad. Okay, this is the packaging tape. It's a nice thin tape, very adhesive. Let's see if it pulls the paper up. Ah, just a little bit. Uh, that's the reason why I don't use it. I mean, it does a good job. Look, look at the nice hard lines here. So far, even this, you can see the residue and you can see a little bit where it pulled it up. Let's do the watercolor tape, it's specialized. Worked well. A little bit up, seeped up underneath there. Not too bad. If you burnish it enough with this paper, it's not too bad. Painter's tape. Beautiful. No adhesive. Works well. This is a masket film. Uh, frisket film, they call it. You kind of mess with it. It did okay. Some of it went up underneath here, but, it, but it's not too bad. Now, this is the liquid frisket. I take it off with my fingers. You know, a lot of people say, well, you get oil on it. Well, I have to say, if, if the palms of your hands are oily, you got a problem. And, and besides, if, if you think they are, go ahead and wash your hands before you do this. And, and all you do is you just rub it off. And this, for irregular patterns and stuff, this works really, really well. As you can see. Masking tape. Pull the paper up. Like I told you, cellophane tape, not too bad, a little bit, pulled it up a little bit. I don't, I don't feel any uh, adhesive here. Uh, the good packaging tape, of course, it pulled the paper up. Watercolor tape, a little bit of underrun. It didn't do too bad, a little bit. Of course, the one I prefer is regular old painter's tape. The liquid frisket, uh, uh, it did okay. And, and it works well with almost any paper. Uh, you can do all kinds of patterns with this thing. Uh, you don't need to paint around, you just draw it in. Frisket film, pretty good. You can, you can work with that, paint a little bit thicker. Remember, this paint was very, very thin. This is what you get.